This video is going to be a quick one through of how to generate a calibration curve in Google Sheets. So the basic issue or challenge we're dealing with here is that we have lots of techniques for measuring concentration or amounts of an analyte of a chemical in a solution or in a sample. But often the data that that technique gives us isn't directly the concentration. So in this example, this is ion chromatography and the instrument signal, the thing we can measure, is the area of these peaks. This chromatogram is a plot of the um, conductivity per time, and the amount of analyte is related to that area of that, that peak. So the amount of chloride is related to the area of this peak. Okay, the area itself doesn't give us much. We need some way to relate it back to a concentration. So something in this example, it's going to be milligrams per liter. And the way we do this is with a calibration curve. The calibration curve is made by taking some standards, some samples of known concentration, in this case the blue dots. So we know the concentration here on the x-axis, and then we run them through the instrument and we measure the response on the instrument signal on the y-axis. Okay, And that's the data that's in the table right here. We can take these data points and look for a region that's linear. You can do curve fits or some um, special fit algorithms, but most often we do calibration curves with linear data. And in this region here, the data is nice and linear, and we can make a best fit line through there. And the math to do that's a little complex, but Excel and Google Sheets give us simple functions to do that. But basically what we do with that math is we figure out an equation for a line that best passes through our data. Okay, so each line can be described as the y value is a slope, m, okay, essentially how steep the line is, times the x data, plus an intercept or where that best fit line crosses the, the y axis. Okay. Once we have that equation, so there's my slope and intercept in this spreadsheet, we can calculate the concentration for an unknown sample, a sample where we didn't measure the concentration ahead of time, by measuring the peak area of that sample. And then we use the best fit line that came from our data up here, that equation, to calculate the concentration. So the x value, the measured x value is that y value for the unknown minus the intercept divided by the slope. And that's the basic process. So visually, we can measure a sample and say this is our y value, and we can just go over to the line and then down and say that must be 40 milligrams per liter. That's what we're doing with this equation here. So how to build this curve. So where you're going to start, I'm going to leave that there and move to a new tab. Where you're going to start is put your X data, your amount of analyte, and this is just for the calibration samples, the one that you're using to build your curve, in the first column. Okay, You can't put letters, so you can't type the units next to the numbers for your data, so go ahead and put them in the, the label for the column. And then next to that, immediately next to it, make a column for your instrument signal for those same calibration samples. So these are the samples that I knew the x value and I measured the y. Okay, And you can go ahead and make a, a plot with this data. Select all the data and insert, chart, and you need to be a little careful here. There's different options for what kind of charts you put in. And for this example in Google Sheets, I'm going to do a line chart. In Excel, this won't work. In Excel, if you do a line chart, it will not use the x values and plot the data points at their actual x measurement. It will just use these as labels and it will evenly space the values. In Google Sheets, we need to do a line chart so I can um, essentially do the next step. So line chart. And it will go ahead and plot them. And in this case, it's um, put my axis label in and, and things like that. I don't really want a title like this, so I'm going to get rid of that title for now. And we can do some, some editing and change font sizes 
and make them a little easier to read. Maybe something like that. <clears throat> okay. We're going to leave that be for now, but you can see that we have a bunch of data in here. It's not perfectly linear. It looks like it sort of curves down. Um, but we're going to sort of move on. Um, and we're going to calculate the slope and the intercept. So I'm going to stick in some labels. These are just text cells so I know what the numbers I'm putting next to them are. To get the slope, I told you Excel or Google Sheets will um, do this for you. We're going to use a function that's built into the software. You can tell Excel that you want it to do a calculation by starting with an equal sign and then you can you know put in a number and type plus and four and it will calculate the value. You can also use functions and there's functions like average and standard deviation in this case there's a function called slope so type in the word slope and then an open parentheses and the stuff that goes in parentheses are the parameters for the function basically the data we're passing to the computer saying do calculations with this it will tell you what it wants it wants the y data and then the x data so the y data will be our peak area that's the data here, and then put in a comma, and the x data is the concentration. Close parentheses and enter, and the slope for this data is 0.164. Okay, the intercept, same thing, type the word intercept. You have to start with equal to say this is a function. The word intercept, open parentheses, and we want the same thing, the y data, comma, the x data. Okay, so this is my slope and my intercept. I'm getting a whole bunch of sig figs there. I'm going to reduce it a little bit so it's easier to read. Okay, if we want to plot the line on the graph, we have to have a line to, to put the data in for. And the way I have been in the habit of doing this is to generate another column. I'm going to call fit. And basically, I'm going to create a new column of y data, sort of parallel to this one. But for each of these x datas, what would the best fit line look like? And so here, this is my equation for a line. This is my new y data. So y equals, and I'll go to the slope times x, mx, plus b. Okay. The slope and the intercept, as I copy this down, I'm going to end up with some trouble because these two cells moved down. When you copy something down in Sheets or Excel, it, it moves the cell it's referring to unless you tell it otherwise. And the way you do this is to put dollar signs in front of the columns and rows you don't want to change. So we want the orange cell, the slope, and the cyan cell, the intercept, to change, or not to change, so they have dollar signs. The purple cell, as we copy it down, should go down. And so when we do that, we get some data, and this is going to be our best fit line. I'm going to come back to the chart. I'm going to edit the chart, and I'm going to go to my data range here, and I just want to add a column. Instead of just going to column B, I want to go all the way over to column C. Okay, and for the series, I want to also plot fit. Okay, now this line isn't a great fit of that, that data in blue. We'll fix that in a little bit. For now, what I'm going to do is this red line, my fit, really is a theoretical line. It should exist at all points across this graph. But my blue data was data points. Those were specific calibration points. I want to display this blue data as points and then the red as a line. And so I'm going to select 
the series that are the data points. And then I'm going to come over here, make sure I'm on the right series. You can change which series you're looking at. And I want this to have no line. And the way you do that is a little unintuitive in sheets. You come down to this line thickness and set the line thickness equal to zero. But I'm going to set my points, and for this plot, I think seven points looks about right, but no line. Okay, so now I have my data points with no connect to the dots. The red is how I'm interpreting how those dots should be connected, and the fact that they're not on there perfectly is a little bit of experimental error. I'm going to come back and look at the fit, and I'm going to change this to blue also, and I'm going to make it a little thinner. I think that looks a little better. Something like that. Okay. So there's some problems with this, and one of them is that this data isn't linear over the whole region. It's only linear in this first part. Let's try up to 50 and see how that looks, and we can tweak it in a little bit. But um, it's only linear in the first part. When I set up my slope and intercept function over here, it fit the data over the entire range, and that's what's causing this blue line to not go through the data as cleanly. So I'm going to come over here to my slope, and on my slope, instead of fitting all of the data, I only want to fit up to... Is it going to let me do it? No. Nope. I'm only going to fit up to A7. Okay, your X data and Y data have to have the same number of points or this is going to be a mess. And make sure that whatever change you make to slope, you make the same change to intercept. But now what I've done is I've changed where I'm fitting. So I'm, I'm still showing all the data, but I'm only fitting part of it. And I think this line goes through my data points very cleanly, and it looks like I'm starting to saturate my detector, and I'm not getting a linear response as I go above 50 parts per million. It might be linear up to like 75 or 80, but I can't be sure because I don't have a data point up here still in the showing a linear response. So I can only assume that this data is good from 0 up to about 50. Okay, so now I have an equation for a line, and I want to do some calculations to figure out the concentration of unknowns. These were standards that I ran where I knew the concentration, and I measured the peak area so that I could figure out the slope and intercept that I can now use to analyze unknowns. Okay. And for my unknowns, I would measure a peak area and calculate the concentration. So the peak area would be data that I would get from well, something like this. So this will be one of our unknowns. Okay. So there's some data here. And I could get the peak area. And I could use that peak area and my calibration curve to calculate the concentration in that sample. So let's say we're doing a CCV and our peak area was 7.22. Again, don't put the units in here. Come up and put the units in, in a label or something. But if you put it in here, then sheets can't do calculations with it. To get the concentration, you would type in essentially an equal sign because you're going to do a calculation. And when we rearrange the y equals mx plus b, x is equal to y. Now th this peak area that the instrument measured for the unknown is our y value for this calculation for the unknown. Okay, you're going to subtract the intercept. Okay. And I put that in parentheses because I want to do the y minus b and then divide the result of that calculation. Divide by in Sheets in Excel is a forward slash. And it's going to divide by the slope m. <clears throat> okay. So then I hit enter. 
and based on this calibration data and this measurement of a peak area for the unknown labeled CCV, the concentration is 29 point, now should probably reduce the sig figs a bit. We're not gonna go into determining this perfectly, but it should be about 29.24. Okay, the units in this concentration are the same units I used to build the calibration curve, so milligrams per liter, which is parts per million if the density of the sample is one, so it's similar to parts per million. Okay, so you want to make sure the peak area you're putting into the calculation matches the peak area of your standards, and that the concentrate, and if you do that, then the concentration that you get as a result will match the units you used in your standards. Okay, the nice thing about a calibration curve is once you build this calibration curve, you could use it to test bunches and bunches of samples. Um, Agriculture and Priority Pollutants Laboratory, the environmental lab that was kind enough to share the data. Um, this, let's go look at their standards that they're giving you. So this is a calibration standard. It was run all the way back in September and they're still getting good data from the September run. For samples that we're now running, uh, where did it go? On October 29. So uh, a much longer um, run time. Okay. And it, part of what they're going to do is they're going to run these continuing calibration verifications, the CCV and things like that, to check that the method is still performing well, that you can run many unknown samples on a single calibration curve, which makes it a pretty efficient process. Okay, the last little bit I want to note is some instructors will likely um, suggest to use what's called a trend line. And it's a relatively easy thing to do. You can just sort of drop it on there and it will plot a line through your points. You can pick some different forms of trend line. You can um, do a number of things with it, but having that trend line on there, um, you know, I can put the equation up there. The downside of this is that you have to type in this slope and intercept which means if you do a, a slight correction, you notice a mistake, it won't update. <clears throat> okay, if I change any one of these numbers, like say I say, oh, that's supposed to be 24.06, everything else will recalculate. Well, I should pick this one. Let me do minus one just to show it. You'll see the slope and intercept change and my calculation down here change. That won't happen if you're typing in the equation manually. The other problem is the trend line must fit all the data. You don't have this ability to go into the functions and edit the range that you're using for your fit. And for those reasons, I'm not a big fan of using the trend line. It's, it's appropriate and reasonable for sort of a quick check and to look at things, um, but I always prefer to, to use these functions and calculate it for real so you get a nice clean graph and have a little more control over which data is fit and that you get these as um, calculated values so you can update it very easily. Okay.